Hey guys, what is going on? So after playing the Overwatch open beta and becoming immediately fucking obsessed with it, I thought to myself, you know what, how about you jump on the bandwagon and do a tips and tricks video for it. So here we are, tips and tricks video. It's Halloween. So the first tip that I've got for you today is a basic one and one for you guys who don't normally play this type of class based game and that is play different classes. This may seem obvious but it surprises me that so many people take a quick look at the characters and like, oh I need to play him. But in actual fact each character is cool in their own way and each of them have interesting and unique abilities. Each one is just as fun to play as the next. But seriously try out different classes and get a feel for each class type and the character within it. In the end you might prefer a certain class type, but you might even surprise yourself and find a new favourite character or class. My second tip is another obvious one. Shit. Are all my tips going to be obvious? Huh. And that is to play with friends slash communicate. Now I've kind of rolled this these two tips up into one big ball of like some sort of katamari guy. But they do go hand in hand because if you're playing with your friends or a group of people that you know and who are all invested in the game then you're gonna you're more than likely to communicate more and talk about the game and just overall coordinate better uh, both when it comes to sort of playing the objective winning the game and also selecting the correct team setup something I might cover at a later date. Communication is super important in this type of game due to the huge focus on objective play so yeah, work uh, in teams and communicate. And that there, boys and girls, is the third tip, so on to the next one. The next tip links together nicely with the last ones. You know, you could say they go together, you know, like salt and pepper. Hey, that kind of rhymes. Huh. So, moving groups. This is key. Don't go thinking it's Call of Duty and that you can run in like some sort of lone wolf and take on the whole team like some sort of Rambo badass. Now, that may be possible under certain circumstances, for example if you have like your ultimate ready or the majority of the team are sort of unaware or something, I don't know. But for the majority of the time you're going to get overrun and you're going to be outnumbered by the enemy team and you're going to die. Now this is where team composition and communication comes in. Um, make sure to move in groups and ensure that you're surrounded by different class types, you know. For example let a tank class walk into an objective or a room first. They can then sort of absorb all the damage and you can hide behind them whilst the tank is being healed by a support player and then you can have your offensive players kind of come in from the side and take on the enemies and sort of take them out. Now I'm not saying this, this sort of tactic works all the time but seriously, play more tactically and remember, safety in numbers. The next one is pretty self-explanatory and I've basically covered it within the other tips so you may ask, Evan, why are you telling us this? Well, I'm telling you because it's super important. Make sure to play the objective. Loads of people will want amazing KD ratios and think that this can't be done by playing the objective, but trust me, as you play the objective, you'll become a better player, uh, both on your own and within a team, which will then in turn help to increase your KD, if, if that's what you care about. Because you know. I don't. I don't care about my KD. But getting a good KD, seriously guys, is down to the objective play. Next point, learn the maps. It's so important that you know all the different routes and shortcuts that you can take around the map, especially with the more agile characters like Genji or Widowmaker that can use their sort of agility abilities oh, fuck, it rhymes, to get around the map in more sneaky and creative ways. It's also extremely useful when it comes to times when the enemy might have you sort of locked within a choke point or something like that, and then it's good to know other useful routes around them so that you can flank them and get out of that choke point, you know. And the last thing knowing about knowing the map is that you can learn the routes and points of the objectives as well as the health packs which can literally be a lifesaver. <laughs> see, see, see what I did there? Yeah. And my last point for you, call this a bonus point for you sticking around this long, and it's always pick your fights. Through playing Overwatch and watching other people play, I've noticed that a lot of people don't pick their fights right. And that's because every character has their strengths and weaknesses against other characters. Think of it like a more complex game of rock, paper, scissors. Or if you don't know what the fuck that is, then think of Pokemon starters. Fire, water and grass. Fire is good against grass types, grass types are good against water types, and water types are good against fire types. It's like an infinite loop of super effectiveness. 
Yeah, yeah. You like that? Yeah. Po Pokemon? Fun? Yeah. Seriously, again with the crickets. Fucking editor. Oh, wait. That's me. Fucking idiot. Now, if we take that idea and apply it to Overwatch, we can quickly see that every character can counter another type of character, and they can also be countered by another character. For example, Genji. He's a very good counter against Bastion, especially when he's in his turret form, because he can sort of deflect all the bullets, and then also dash behind him and hit his weak spot. However, Bastion is then a good counter against Winston due to his high damage output, which works well against Winston's large character model, sort of making him at a disadvantage. And then last but not least, Winston is good against Genji due to his large amounts of health, but also his electric shock gun thingy. It can't be blocked basically by Genji's sword, and is therefore good at taking him out. Although I've mentioned these counters in Rules of Three, there are more counters to each character, um, sort of, there can be four or five, whatever it happens to be, and that's something I'll be covering in a series of videos. Plug, plug, plug. So that's me for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tips and video, and hopefully it'll help all you players out there looking to get into Overwatch and help you get a, a leg up on the competition or some, something like that, you know? Or for you guys who know better than I do and are here just to point out my, my mistakes. Thanks, and until next time, guys, see ya!